Reaching down from the northern tip of Alaska to the Isthmus of Panama, a vast and varied sweep of coastline forms the western threshold of North America. Almost in the center of this coastal region, and inland a few miles from the sea, lies the place of our story. Here in Southern California, a new land has come into being. Its purpose is enlightenment. Its product, happiness. This place is Disneyland, USA. Disneyland could happen only in a country where freedom is a heritage and the pursuit of happiness a basic human right. And Disneyland has happened only once during this century, for here is an entirely new concept in family entertainment. Disneyland is divided into five different realms. We shall visit them all and experience many thrilling adventures. But perhaps one of the greatest adventures here was the planning and construction of Disneyland itself. Only yesterday, this was 200 acres of emptiness. Today, out of the flat, sandy soil, desert rock formations have miraculously appeared, and hills and valleys. And where all was once bleak and arid, wide, navigable streams and rivers now flow. trees and foliage of Disneyland have been brought from all parts of the world. Here they've taken root and have begun to thrive and grow. And so shall Disneyland itself continue to expand and develop, so that one may always find in this enchanted domain the new and the unexpected. Well, there's a lot going on down there right now, and we want to be a part of it. So let's drop in for a typical day in Disneyland, just as though we were actually visitors from some distant place. In this modern age, we'll arrive by helicopter and touch down for our landing at the Disneyland heliport. Before we start the grand tour, however, we'll probably want to register at the Disneyland hotel. Everything's on wheels here, even the people. And one of these little trams will bring us right to the main entrance of the hotel. Here, all the family will find a warm welcome and the finest in modern hospitality. This is outdoor living at its carefree best. Scattered throughout these spacious grounds are many recreational areas, where guests of all ages may enjoy games and social activities. Well, now that we've checked in and had a plunge in the pool, it's off to Disneyland. And we can thumb a ride from anywhere in the area, or this mechanical mule train will take us straight to the main entrance. The first sight to greet us is one of the famous Disneyland trains of the 1860s. Ripley and Disneyland passenger train, the P. Ripley now arriving on track number one from a trip around Walt Disney's Magic Kingdom. Passengers will stand by to board. Baggage and mail car board and the platform. Later, we'll board one of these trains for a sightseeing trip. But now let's join the crowd passing through the tunnels of the main entrance. And this is where the world of today is left behind. For now we enter the land of yesterday and tomorrow, and of course the land of fantasy. This is Disneyland's town square and the beginning of Main Street, USA. Here is America at the turn of the century, at the crossroads of an era. The gas lamp is just giving way to the electric lamp, and the horse car to the auto car. The old fire department is here too, very active. There's also a police station, a town hall, even a newspaper.
Along Main Street, as everywhere in Disneyland, the modes of transportation are many. There's even a double-decker bus for those who prefer to see the sights from the heights. Fangled notions have their place all right, but there's a lot of folks who still think horsepower should be supplied by horses. So let's hop aboard this old-fashioned streetcar and take a front row seat. We'll soon discover this is just about the busiest, most colorful Main Street in all of America. The Main Street Movie House features six silent cinemas, all running at the same time. In the symphony of Main Street, the shooting gallery and the mechanical melodeons add another nostalgic note. At the end of Main Street is the plaza, and for us, this is the end of the line. But before choosing our next adventure, we'll pause for a moment to rest in the shade and enjoy the passing scene. The plaza is the hub of Disneyland. From this focal point, radiate all the different and distinctive realms. The Avenue of Flags marks the entrance to Tomorrowland, where man's dreams of the future become the realities of today. And just beyond the Lake of the Swans, Fantasyland, the happiest kingdom of them all. From all corners of the world, visitors come to cross over this drawbridge and enter the timeless world of imagination. And many of them pause for just a moment to photograph the graceful towers and turrets of Sleeping Beauty's castle. Behind the entrance to Adventureland lies a network of mysterious tropical waterways, but we'll return to explore them later. First, we're going to look at a panorama of the past, America's past. This is Frontierland, dedicated to the faith, courage, and ingenuity of the pioneers who blazed the trails across America to a new, unsettled land. Frontierland tells the story of a young and enterprising nation and of a people moving westward by riverboat and keelboat, by stagecoach and covered wagon. Here, pioneer days and frontier ways are relived in the river towns and in the trading posts, in the wilderness forts and Indian villages.
just across from the steamboat landing lies Tom Sawyer's Island. Everybody loves to explore, and this is the place to do it. There are secret paths and winding trails, and mysterious hideaways, such as Injun Joe's Cave. You can climb to the lofty summit of Lookout Point, or sway your way across the old suspension bridge. Frontierland, the desert roads and trails lead to the western mining town of Rainbow Ridge. Deep in these hills are the beautiful Rainbow Caverns, which can be visited aboard one of these sturdy little mine trains. Rainbow Ridge is a frontier traffic center. Here, stagecoaches and Conestoga wagons arrive and depart just as they did in the days gone by. The younger pioneers, prospecting for pleasure, hit the desert trails on a mule train. In any mining town, gold is where you find it. Here's a desperate character trying to take it with a six gun instead of a shovel. While the villain heads for the last roundup, we'll head for cover in the gold mine. But we soon emerge again to begin a trip into the wide open spaces of the great American desert. To take care of desert traffic problems, there's a natural bridge. And it's just as efficient as the modern freeway. Disneyland would a cactus try to thumb a ride. And this is nature's version of heavy, heavy hangs over thy head. But they're perfectly safe. Not one has ever been lost. Either a rock, or a visitor. In the heart of the desert, the bubbling mud pots add a note of brilliant color. And atop the distant buttes, the Indian Pueblo stand in silent tribute to the artistry of an ancient people. Today is yesterday, the rivers of Frontierland are teeming with traffic. Rafts carry passengers to and from Tom Sawyer's Island. And the proud queen of the river is the Mark Twain. Twain is old in history, but as new as her paint. She's the only one of her kind to be built in the last 60 years. In Frontierland, with a real Indian guide, you can paddle your own canoe. Or if you prefer, you can visit the Frontier Landings and see the sights aboard one of Mike Fink's keelboats.
every bend in the river, dramatic scenes from the pioneer days come into view. Here's a settler's cabin set afire by flaming arrows. But of course, the Indians had their friendlier moments, too. Wildlife was abundant in those early days. Here, the American Indian lived out his primitive way of life. Here, stagecoaches wrote an American legend with their turning wheels. But there were some who resented this westward migration. Others were curious and noncommittal. A frontier landmark was the Wilderness Fort. It was both a trading post and a garrison that kept the peace and preserved the treaty with the Indians. To visit Frontierland and travel along its high roads and by roads is to relive in this modern day all the high adventure of the American pioneer. At Huck Finn's favorite fishing hole, the fish are real, and they really bite. What's more, you can keep all you catch. In winning the West, it was the railroads that clinched the victory and welded our country together with bands of steel. These two iron horses are exact replicas of the old timers that spanned our continent a century ago. So now it's all aboard for an adventure on the high iron. The Disneyland Railroad is a sightseer's dream, for it circles the entire perimeter of Disneyland. But we're going to stay aboard just long enough to catch another perspective of Frontierland. village is a permanent and popular attraction here. 17 different tribes are represented. This is the Drum and Feather Club, an organized group that often uses this traditional setting for their festive activities. All such groups are welcome to come here and perpetuate their ceremonial customs and centuries-old cultures. Although Disneyland covers many acres, it's been planned to keep walking at a minimum. And so from Frontierland, it's just a matter of magic moments before we find ourselves in another part of the world, the tropical jungles of Adventureland. Primeval, 
exotic and mysterious, this is a wonderland of nature's own design. And now aboard an explorer's launch, we'll leave the last outpost of civilization and push off into the upper reaches of the Amazon. Here is a perennial paradise, a tropical rainforest filled with rare plants and exotic flowers. In this mysterious maze of jungle waterways, the skipper of our boat is a seasoned traveler. He knows all the lore and legend of Adventureland. And so now we'll just watch and listen as he becomes our guide. And now we're on a broader stream, the Mekong River of Cochin, China. Half hidden by the foliage, we get our first glimpse of a man-made structure, the ruins of an ancient Cambodian shrine abandoned many centuries ago. Watch, we're approaching them now. Those charging alligators. Now watch your head, please. Watch the head. Oh. And now, if you keep watching that far bank, you can say that you've had a nodding acquaintance with a giraffe. The giraffe, however, won't be able to say a thing, for this is one animal that has no vocal cords. Now, behind that pampas grass on your right, <coughs> Watch those two baby rhinos. You hear that? That's our lonesome lady elephant calling to her mate. And from across the river, her lord and master, size of those ears. Well, that's the hallmark of the African elephant. Well, let's leave the happy couple and head for Schweitzer Falls, named in the honor of the famous doctor scientist. Uh, <laughs> a little close. Now, about this part of the Nile, we usually run into something big. Yes, sir, the the traffic gets pretty congested here when the hippo tribe comes up for air. You feel that danger is lurking behind every log? Well, it is. waterfall, all rivers meet. It takes some skillful maneuvering to navigate the narrow passage behind this cascade, but our skipper will bring us through safely. He always does. In fact, as many as 18,000 people a day take this boat trip. And when they return to civilization safe and sound, they long remember the beauty and excitement they found in the teeming tropical jungles of Adventureland.
From the primeval jungles of Adventureland to the futuristic facades of Tomorrowland is only a step, but it's a step into the wonderful world of the future. Here is the atomic age in action, where science and industry combine to present a preview of tomorrow's living. Appropriately, things are on the move in Tomorrowland. And one of the most exciting adventures is Autopia, the freeway to fun. This is the safest superhighway in the world. In the family car, it's the grown-ups who do the driving. But here in Autopia, the youngsters are in the driver's seat and head for the open road on their own. In Autopia, you're just as young as you think you are. And here comes the proof. Tomorrowland, there's a special area reserved for model airplane clubs. This is a scale model jet job. These are the astrojets, and they offer a thrilling spin through space. Once you take off, you're in complete control of your ship, within safe limits, of course. In Tomorrowland, the theme is progress, and time marches only toward the future. But close by is a land where there's no time at all. This is Fantasyland. The symbol of this enchanted land, indeed of Disneyland itself, is Sleeping Beauty's castle. It's actually a composite of many castles, both real and legendary. In the shadow of these graceful spires, the age of chivalry, of magic and make-believe are reborn. And now let's join the crowd as they cross over the moat and pass through these portals to enter a realm beyond reality. And here we shall relive for a little while the time of childhood, the happiest time of all. Just beyond King Arthur's carousel is the Peter Pan adventure. This is a flying trip on a pirate ship over the moonlit city of London to Peter Pan's Never Never Land. This carefree crew had better chart a careful course, for there are perils, pitfalls, and plenty of pirates along the way. Mr. Smee! Mr. Smee! Here they come, Mr. Smee! Fire, Mr. Smee! Shoot him down! To travel the road with Mr. Toad and experience his misadventures is something you'll never forget. <laughs> Monstro the Whale is a permanent resident in Fantasyland. His monstrous grin is an open invitation to one and all to enter an enchanted world where fairy tales come true.
this is Storybook Land, and the pilot of our boat will help us recall all the fond memories of childhood. Our first story brought to life is that of the famous Three Little Pigs. Here are their houses, the one of straw, the one of stakes, and the wolf-proof one of brakes. Ratty's Riverbank House and Mr. Toad's magnificent mansion recalls the story of Wind in the Willows. Oh, uh -oh watch for the low bridges. And once upon a time, Cinderella followed this winding road to meet her Prince Charming in this castle where they lived happily ever after. Over the seven hills, past the seven waterfalls, lies the forest cottage of Snow White and the seven dwarfs. Casey Jr. is the busiest character in storybook land. this English cottage, under the oak tree, Alice began her adventures in Wonderland. The mill with the white sails is the hero of the story, the old mill. And up ahead, among those Swiss Italian Alps, lies Pinocchio's village. fell in the little village, but this time our weatherman happens to be a gardener. At the Mad Hatter's tea party in Fantasyland, there's little time for small talk or polite conversation. Things are always in a whirl. Disneyland band gets in the spin, it's tempo in a teacup. Of course, in Fantasyland, one expects to see an elephant fly. And with Dumbo, it's no problem at all, for he was born with aerodynamic ears. But the highest flight of fancy is the Skyway. This is the topmost vantage point in all of Disneyland. At this quaint and colorful Swiss chalet, passengers arrive and depart on an aerial journey between Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. Here aboard the Skyway, a well-remembered phrase from Alice in Wonderland comes true. 
Up above the world you fly like a tea tray in the sky. This is Fantasyland, the happiest kingdom of them all. Dedicated to the young and to the young in heart. To those who believe that when you wish upon a star, your dreams really do come true. In Disneyland's broad and busy program, group activities and special events play an all-important part. To help fulfill the spirit and purpose of this program, many organizations Clubs and historical societies are welcomed here. In keeping with the American custom, all the seasonal holidays are observed. Here in the appropriate setting of Main Street, USA, the Horseless Carriage Club participates in the traditional Easter parade. models of 50 years ago were high, wide, and handsome. So were the Easter bonnets of this gay era. Of course, in the days of the linen duster, there always came that inevitable moment when you had to climb out and wind her up again. Everybody wants to lead a band. There's always something doing on Main Street. And here comes Walt Disney and Bess Parker leading the circus parade. Of course, in Disneyland, it's the gaudy, gilded circus of the good old days. At the end of each day, in the busy gaiety of Main Street, there comes a pause, for this is a time of tribute to our country's flag. Here in the town square, at the base of the flagpole, there's a plaque which sets forth in letters of bronze the purpose for which Disneyland was created and dedicated. 
To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here, age relives fond memories of the past, and here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America, with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world.